21, 1 through 4, it, it speaks of, of the ultimate comfort that God gives to us. So if you will, uh, open your Bible to Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Revelation 21, 1 through 4. And it reads, uh, and it reads, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, saying, Behold, the tabernacle, tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among men, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no longer any death, nor, nor longer any mourning or crying or pain. The first scenes have passed away. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. May we bow in a moment of prayer. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, Lord God, we thank you again for this hour of worship. We pray, Lord, that we, we come, that our eyes and our ears be open to the word of God, that we will be able to take away what you have given us and use it in our everyday life as Christians. Be able to help others, comfort others in their, in their need. We pray for our pastor that he deliver the word unencumbered by, by Satan. We pray that all of us, our ears will be open and that the effects of Satan will be removed temporarily, that we may know and do your will. We pray for our sisters and brothers that are not here in this, in this congregation. We pray that, you know, that you will heal their pain, some are in pain, and some uh, not here because of their their personal their, their personal needs. We thank you, Lord, for all things. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
She did a marvelous job. She found some black history for us, didn't she? Amen. Amen. Now, who did she say was the first black doctor who was from Marshall, Texas?
quiet, quiet in the morning. Done a wonderful job. Won't you trick to get a quiet in this morning? Sometimes we need some encouragement. Amen. At this time, we have uh, altar call at this time. Amen. I don't know how you feel, but I feel good. Listen to the choir, Lord, have mercy. At this time, if you don't mind, let the church, you can stand or you can come to the altar. Wherever you feel comfortable. You know, when I leave the Lord, I, I look up and I, I hit that old, get that hymn, that old hymn, I need thee. I leave the Lord. I don't know about how you feel. Thinking about to those people who lost their lives over there in that other country. We are always the same. I'll always be ready to pray. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our heart. Thanking you, Father, for blessing us there one more day, Lord. Lord, as we gather here this morning, I pray, holy and righteous Father, if it's your will, that you will let everything go according to your will this morning. Father, we pray for the man of God that you place over this house, Lord. We ask you, Father God, that you will continue to bless him and their lovely wife, Lord. Continue to give him the strength that he needs to stand in this sacred place, this sacred place, to preach your gospel, Lord. Father, we want to say thank you, Lord. You've been a mighty good God, Lord, even when we don't deserve it, Lord. Father, you've been continue to bless us and us. Lord, as we gather this morning, we ask you, Father God, that you allow your Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and our minds this morning, that our mind will be on you, Lord. That our mind will be on you from hearing a word from heaven this morning. We need a word this morning, Lord God. We need a word to give us the strength that we may continue on this Christian journey. Father, we will hear for no other reason to give you the praise and glory because you are truly worthy. Oh, Lord, we know it was you that touched us this morning to see another day. It was you that touched us to allow to continue to go on on this Christian journey. So, Father, now, if it's your will, allow your spirit to move among us this morning. Yeah, yeah. Touch our heart and our mind, Lord, because we know that you are a heart fixer and a mind revelator. So right now, Lord, somebody needs you right now. Somebody don't know where to turn to, Lord. But right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray that your will will be done this morning. We pray, Holy Father, if it's your will, that your word will go out and encompass what is going out for, Lord. That somebody need to hear a word from today, Lord. Somebody need to be encouraged today that I'm not in this bow by myself. I got my Heavenly Father with me, Lord. So, Father, right now, if it's your will, allow your Holy Spirit to set our heart and mind. Father, take, dear Lord, if anything is not pleasing in your sight, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus to remove it. Father, because we are here for no other reason to praise you, because, Lord, we know without you we couldn't do nothing. But right now, we ask if it's your will. Allow your spirit to come in 
and sup with us, but that's a little while, Lord. Somebody here, somebody here lost a loved one. Somebody here sick this morning. Somebody here need a doctor, Lord. And we know that you can be all that, Lord. But right now, Lord, we want to hear a word to say. We want to hear, we want to learn, to, we want to realize what it is to be a Christian. So right now, if it's your will, touch us in a mighty special way. Touch those on our sick list, Lord. Those who are sick and proud, Lord, if it's your will, let your will be done, Lord. Those who need a healing, Lord, if it's your will, let your will be done. Those who need to be uh, known that they need comfort, Lord, be the comfort to them right now, Lord. Because, Lord, we know without you, Lord, and we know that all things are possible with you. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, if it's your will, let your will be done. It's in Jesus' name we come praying. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. Take control 
But I ask that you will use me in a mighty special way. That someone will hear your word today. That everything will be all right. Because I heard Sunday school this morning that when we talk to you, we pray. And when you talk to us, it's from your word. And God, we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First, I want to say hello and good morning to everyone. Amen. In Malachi, three, Malachi, three, When we get there at verse 6, and it says, For I am the Lord. Amen. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Y'all see that? Yeah. Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinance. And have not kept me. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. But he said, For end shall we return? Amen. Watch this here. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But you say, but he said. For in have we robbed thee in tithes and in offering. Mm -hmm. Notice this next verse. Mm -hmm. It said, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Watch what that say. It said, even, even this whole nation. Mm -hmm. yep. Then he go on and he said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house, and prove me not her whip, said the Lord of hosts. Amen. If I will not open, look at that. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Notice the next verse. Mm -hmm. And it said, And I will rebuke the devour. For your sake. See, that's what we have to do sometimes. We start reading the passage of scripture. You got to keep on reading that. Keep on reading that passage of scripture. Once, once you keep reading that, you'll get a more understanding of what he's trying to tell us. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Mm -hmm. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field said the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. And all nations, mm -hmm. and all nations shall call you blessed. And all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I wanted to tag this this morning Please reverse the curse. Please reverse the curse coming from verse 9. Thank you, ushers. 
It is terrible and tragic to have access to your blessings, yet you are blocked by your curse. Did we catch that? Amen. Well, it is true that countless individuals will call themselves Christians, live a seemingly picture perfect existence that appears to be marked by blessings, joys, pleasures, and grace, gifts. But in reality, from God's perspective word, the words promise, and they are stifled, they are held back, handcuffed by the misery of their curse. Are you with me? And I also thought of the fact that the very thing that stands between the authority of the believer and the wealth of God is our faulty interpretation of the holy word of God and our thief and robber's mentality. And it's through that thievish mentality and incorrect interpretation that robs the believer of possessing the wealth and the blessings of God in their lives. Why, preacher? Because we have settled for selling ourselves short. We block our blessings. And we are content with our curse. And what I'm suggesting in a real sense is that when it comes to the issue of money and stewardship and giving and increase our motives ought to become mixed up by human limitations. Spiritual short-sightedness and a lack of faith to take God at his word. You see, we develop and construct satanic belief in our brain that says that all of our money and everything that we possess is for the sole purpose for our ungodly motives, self-gain, and fleshly and carnal ambition. But according to the biblical order of God, God blesses those who do it his way and he curses the one who refused to follow his plan. Flow in his purpose and walk in their inheritance. You see, it's a terrible and tragic to who have assessed your blessings, yet you have blocked by a curse. And there is what I mean is that there are countless people who call themselves Christians who come to church Sunday after Sunday looking and smelling good who have settled for setting themselves short and we block our own blessings and are content with continually living with a curse 
making a living, but we become disobedient and the curse is forbidding you to make a life. Living and dressing good, but you one day find yourself a day late and a dollar short with your stuff. And the reason is simply because you have refused to honor the Lord with your own. Help me, Holy Spirit. In other words, you have a good job, you have a nice home, and you have nice cars, my brothers and sisters, but you can't make the ends meet because the Lord has cursed you not for the continual refusing of your faith just to give him a 10. 9 versus 10. And you see what I want to do today? I, I want to press. I, I want to encourage somebody that your tomorrow can be brighter than your yesterday. You see, you see, God desires that you move from him, uh, you move him from being your last resort to your first priority. Amen. In other words, what I'm saying, he wants us to put him first. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. You say it is the will of God that you move the word of God from being your spare time and make it your stern wheel. When we look at our text, yes. Malachi 3, and this is what a story is. At the time of the text, about a hundred years had passed since God had set the Israelites free from their Babylonian captivity. Stay with me, church. It has been approximately a century since God used a pagan king uh, Cyrus of Persia to overthrow the Babylonian Empire, set the Jewish people free, and even ordered them to go home to rebuild God's holy city of Jerusalem. Now, those first days back home was marked by a spiritual renewal and a breathing was again. In other words, the holy temple was restored by Ezra. The city walls were rebuilt by Nehemiah. Are you with me? And the people's hearts were revived. I, I don't want to stay right here because some, sometimes we, we do the same thing. However, no longer after being home, not long after God had done so much for them. Sometimes it makes you want to look at yourself. The Israelites fell once more into a cold, cruel, and they become calm. And, and once again, what happened is that these Israelites began to turn their hearts away from God. And they began to do things their way rather than in his way. Amen. Now, now, my Bible tells me, uh -huh. and yours tells you the same thing. If you look over at Psalms 100, uh, 103 and 8, it said that God is slow mm -hmm. to anger. Y'all remember reading that? Yeah. But if you are slow mm -hmm. to do right, his anger will eventually catch up with you. That's, that's, that, 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 that's why we're going through so much trouble today. And, 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 and sometimes we, we can't figure it out, Brother Stephen. We, we can't figure out why we are going through the trouble that we're going through. And when God sees the people have yet once more for yet another generation proving themselves to diss God and do it their own way, God's patience is worn and he decides to give Israel one more chance. Yeah. 
That's, that's what I like about God. He, he'll give you another chance. But take no hurry. That the prophecy of Malachi is not just the last call for Israel's spirituality, my brothers and sisters. Chronologically, the book of Malachi is last in the Old Testament and it's not by accident. When you finish reading Malachi, then you flip over and then you get to New Testament. Are you with me? Matthew. But consequently, from the end of Malachi to the beginning of Matthew, there is a gap. Listen what I'm trying to tell us. There is a gap, my brothers and sisters. It's a period where God didn't talk to them for 400 years. Are y'all with me? Have there ever been a time in your life here today when it seemed like you tried to talk to God but God would listen to you. That God wasn't answering your prayers. Somebody was sitting in your house and you kept calling on him but he never answered your prayer. Maybe, maybe perhaps what, what, what he's trying to show us that sometimes God just be quiet. So what happened to the Israelite is he, he shut up. He didn't want to keep on hearing this same stuff that's going on today. We talk about the virus. We talk about folks killing one another. We talk about political, uh, the, uh, uh, the people in the White House and everywhere in our government. Maybe, maybe perhaps the children of God is not doing what we're supposed to be doing. God just stopped. He stopped talking to them for 400 years. And here is the coming of the Messiah. It reveals that God is no longer, listen to me closely, he's no longer counting on Israel to do what is right. You don't want to mess up with God. You don't want to get yourself in a position that God don't talk to you. What is exactly a reprobate mind? Listen to me. If you look over in Romans 1 and 28, it said, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, listen what I'm saying. Amen. Yep. This is the truth. It's hard, but it's the truth. Yeah. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do things which are not convenient. When the Messiah comes, he shuts the door on calling Israel the chosen and the promised people of God. And when the Messiah comes, he opens the door and the floodgates for a strange group of people that the Bible calls whosoever will. Did y'all catch that? Whosoever will. And before the Messiah comes, and before he shuts his mouth, God through his grace, he gives Israel, see, this is good, because he keeps giving Israel one more chance. In fact, what this is telling us 
is telling us, uh, my brothers and sisters, the bottom line to the book of Malachi here is that we need to stop playing church. We need to stop playing church. My, my pastor used to always tell me, he said, look, if you ain't going to do right, stay in my place. Stay at home. Because that's what's going to happen when, when it's over. If you're not doing right, you might well stay at home. Ain't no need of you coming up and giving your time and playing like you doing something in God's house and you, you don't have the right mind or the right spirit or the right heart. Because it's one thing to come to church, but it's another thing to be in the church. It's one thing to go to worship, but it's another thing to have worship go through you. It's one thing to boast and brag about how long the Lord has been working on you. But it's another thing to reach a point where the Lord is working in you and through to work on somebody else. In other words, what you're saying, when we come up in here, starting from Sunday school to the end of service, when we leave here, we ought to be going out telling somebody about the goodness of God. Are you with me? You see, it's one thing to come to church, to sit, to look, text, like we sometimes do, and then we make our exit. But it's another thing when your mind has been renewed and your soul has been redeemed and your commitment real fine. And we can go somewhere and people will know that you're a child of God. Are, are you with me, church? Amen. Stay with me now. There's a little teaching here. First of all, there's a danger of disobedience. If you look at verses 6 through 10 through 9, it's saying the rebellion have gone away. All of us set a pause. Your calling has departed from what I have called you to do. You know how it is sometimes. We be on fire for the Lord, and then sometimes the old devil just sneak in. And when he sneaks in, he starts pulling you away from God. Pulling you away from your blessings. Are you with me? And then now, I like this part. Then what, 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 what he tells us in our text, he, he goes on, then God said, you have robbed me. There's a difference between a thief and a robber. Are you with me? A thief waits until you walk away and not looking and then he steals what you have by his sneakiness. But a robber takes a gun, a knife, a weapon and he stands to your face and takes what you have by force. God didn't say that we are thieves. He said we are robbers. Are you with me? And Israel is so hard-hearted, brother Caesar. They so stiff-necked that they can't even recognize that it's their sin that is causing separation with God. Can I tell somebody? When you don't do what God is asking you to do, it's going to be a separation. It's going to be a separation. You see, they think 
that the reason there is tension is because of some inconsistency and unfaithfulness on God's part. In other words, they want to blame God. Did I help us this morning? I'm not going to be too much of If we don't watch ourselves, we'll do the same thing or worse than these Israelites do. Are you with me? When God gives life and then God takes it away, right? When, when, when he takes someone away from us that we really love, then the first thing we want to do is start blaming God. Are uh, uh, y'all with me? I'm, I'm being honest. All right. But we all know that we're not going to stay here forever. Now, I like what this part right here. God clears this up with them. In verse 6, he says, uh, I am the Lord and I change not. Uh, Y'all got it? In other words, what he's telling them is that he don't change. And what that means is that if God does, listen to this, if God does seem distant and far away, Guess who moved? We did. It wasn't God who, it was us who moved. But God says in our text, he, he said, uh, uh, let me tell you what the real issue is. He, he goes on and he said, what you need to do, you need to return um, to me. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want you to watch these hard-headed folks. In verse 7, they said, return in what way? And I, I like what Malachi, he, he gives a verbal question to add attention to the text. They ask him, return. And then in verse chapter 2 and verse 7, you, he tells them you'll make it God will. And they want to make it a word of what way? They are playing. They're okie dokie and acting brand new like they don't know what they're doing. Sometimes we have to watch ourselves. Because sometimes we know what we are doing. We know that we are not right. Hello, somebody. And the reason why is simply because of the fact that everybody else got a problem. But we don't have no problem. Ain't, ain't that kind of strange where he's messing up. Brother Boy messing up. Sister Lewis messing up. Sister Margaret messing up. Brother Cecil messing up. They got, we always want to say they got a problem. But we never take the time to look at our problem. Amen. Notice this here. You raw God. You rob the church, and then you rob yourself. The average Christian is not honoring, honoring the Lord by giving. We have a lot of people who have not committed themselves to study the Word of God. We don't want to come to Sunday school. We don't want to come to Bible study. You know, I, oftentimes I, I say this is that the Baptist church is one of the hardest places to get some learning. Because we don't want to go to Sunday school. We don't want to go to Bible study. And we make excuses on why they're not killing like God asked us. When we are disobedient, here's our favorite thing that we say. And I'm just telling us the truth. 
We'll say this quick. God understands. I, I, didn't, I didn't come to church, but God understands. <laughs> it's been a long month, preacher. I got great bills to pay. I got a lost family. I got goals to reach. But God, he understands. And because of your management of the nine in your finance, can I help somebody today? It ain't God's fault when you don't have anything left at the end to give him in church. And I'm just not talking about money. I'm talking about giving. You see, you see, something's got to change. And when it comes, uh, the mistake you made in the blessing him that you need and you can't live without, you cannot afford not to give God back what he graciously gave you to begin with at first. He can take it all. And all he asks is up with 10%. So, so what I'm trying to tell you, and I'm going to tell you this here. See, I, I, I'm afraid that God does not understand. When we don't give like we ought to give, God does not understand. In reality, a man not giving back to him is conceived as spiritual robbery. Hmm. And when you spiritually brought God, he tells us in verse 9 that you are cursed with a curse. God watches us. He sees us, he, he saw you when you got out the car this morning. When you walked up in here. He said, you, you walk up in my house, in my house, Every Sunday, you didn't you didn't have to walk here. You drove in a fine automobile. You had nice clothes on. You had nice shoes to wear. And you come right up here in my face with all of the things that you got. He said, "That's why you are cursed with a curse. The grace of giving." It's in verses 7 through 10 a. The grace of giving is based on your position. He said return. The grace of giving is based on privilege. He said bring you all the tithes. And then the grace of giving is based on purpose. That there may be meat in my house. And that's verse 10. Part number three. And I'm going to get ready to go. The outcome to obedience is in verses 10b through 12. If you look at verse 10, it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in my House and prove me now here with me, the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the wonders of heaven, my brothers and sisters, and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. Then he goes on in the next verse. He said, And I will repeat the devourers for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And then he go on, he said, all of the nations to call you blessed, for ye shall be the lightsome land, or the lightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. God promised 
to reward our faith. Are y'all with me? He said, I will open not room enough to receive it. And then God promised to rebuke our foes. I will rebuke the divine. And then God promised to renew fruitfulness. All the nations delight for land. I'm getting ready to leave it in just a few minutes. Israel, in Israel, there are two different types of water. But they have the same supply. The Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. And actually, it comes from my home. And when it's snow capped, when that snow begins to melt yeah, yeah. on my home, it rushes violently down from my home into the northern inlet of the Jordan River. And then it flows straight from the Jordan River out through the southern outlet of the Jordan in the northern inlet of the Sea of Galilee. And you see, that same water, it keeps flowing through the Sea of Galilee out in this outlet, southern outlet, into the northern inlet of the Dead Sea. Once it gets into the Dead Sea, it stands still because the Dead Sea has no southern outlet. The Dead Sea has a northern inlet, but no southern outlet. So the same water that flows into the Jordan and out the Jordan, into the Sea of Galilee, and out of the Sea of Galilee into the Dead Sea, the cycle is suspended and aborted, and there it stands and it remains in the Dead Sea. Look up at it sometimes, look it up. But yet the waters of the Sea of Galilee and the waters of the Dead Sea are different because the Sea of Galilee is rich and refreshing. Things grow in it and flow in it. But not in the Dead Sea. But the Dead Sea is cited as the Dead Sea for a reason. Why, preacher? Because nothing can flow there, therefore nothing can grow there. Are you with me, preacher? And you see the reason why? Because it is dead. Now how can these two different bodies of water get their water supply from the same source and one is rich and refreshing and the other is dead. And that is because the Sea of Galilee receives and releases and therefore it grows and it flows down. But the Dead Sea has a sensitive mentality but no release. It takes in, but lets nothing else in. Let nothing go. And that's why it's today. Now I'm bringing this up because more than likely there are two different Christians in here today. And of course you get your blessing from the same supply, the same source, because according to James, he said, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Are you with me? So, my brothers and sisters, then how can one Christian's life be rich and the other Christians get their blessing and good gifts from the same sovereign sources, but their lives is dead? It's because if you have a receptive mentality, but no 
release. Some of us say we got it, but where is your release? Are, are you with me? So if you want to receive God's blessings, but do not have, but do not release God's blessings, tell me somebody. It may seem like you enjoy it okay. It may seem like to the world that everything uh, that you're doing is okay. Am I right about it? Uh, but somebody told me that we've been made endure for a life. But it said joy comes in the morning. Am I right about it? Uh, and I used to hear the old saints say, Trouble may come your way, but you ought to be glad that trouble don't last always. Yeah, yeah. Am I right about it? Uh, and then uh, my brothers and sisters, I heard the other day uh, when praises goes up, yeah. then blessings going to come back down. Oh, yeah. Am I right about it? Uh, and I used to hear the old saints say, you can't uh, beat God kid. The more you kill to him, the more he'll kill to you. Am I right about it? And I don't care how many times that you come to church. Am I right about it? And I don't care how big your Bible is. Am I right about it? And I don't care how cute you call yourself looking when you come up in here. Am I right about it? You can't be God given. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, and what I'm trying to tell you, uh, when God gives you something, uh, he expects you to give it to somebody else. Am I right about it? You can't beat God giving. Am I right about it? And our thoughts are not like his thoughts. Am I right about it? Uh, and I looked over in Isaiah 55. And when I looked over, he said, for my thoughts are not like your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, but said the Lord. For he said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are than your thoughts. Am I right about it? And what I'm trying to tell you, that the more you give to God, the more he give to you. Am I right about it? And one of these are uh, oh, sweet days uh, when we meet Jesus. Am I right about it? I don't know about you, but what I want to hear him say, my brothers and sisters, is well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up and I make you ruler over me. Am I right about it? I don't know about you, but I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hands. And one of these sweet days, everything's going to be all right. Every now and then, I can throw my hands up and tell the Lord, thank you for your blessings. Am I right about it? Every now and then, I get down on my knees and I tell him, thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. Am I right about it? Every now and then, I can look all around and I start thanking God for what all he's done for me. Am I right about it? Sometimes, church, I get up in the morning and it be cold church I turn around and go back and turn the heat on and I thank God for his blessings ain't God alright ain't he alright have you tried him ain't he alright somebody ought to throw your hands and tell the Lord he's alright ain't he alright ain't he alright have you tried him have you tried him? Can you say, yeah, yeah, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Ain't he all right? Please reverse the curse. Think about that, church. Read that passage. Of scriptures. 
We get home sometime before the Eagles come on. Before Kansas City come on. Read that passage of scripture and see how God is blessing us. And read that part where he said we are cursed with a curse. Remind Pastor. Talk to us about giving. Get ready now. Well, Lord, my brother Cecil said, pretty the club. When he started talking about giving, I used to say, well, that's going to be hard to do. To give from 10%. Of what I make on Fridays. I want to go to the guy. I want to go out to the club. I want to party. I want to dress like everybody else was dressing. So I did. I did. But I wasn't hurting nobody but myself. But when I start learning how to give, and when I gave my 10%, I didn't miss it. It was like I was giving him 10, and he was giving more. Y'all know what I'm saying? It, it seemed like you don't miss it. I'm going to tell you something. I ain't no way in the world I go without giving 10%. But you get confused. And your 10% is given. Do like Pastor Mac, I think he used to tell Brother Cecil. He said, if you can't figure out what to give, then give 10%. And if you give 10%, you give in your tithes. And I said, don't say this, uh, give the, the commitment. To him, don't do like some people now. Some people they don't go to church <laughs> and they still saying it's the COVID, but they go everywhere else, they fly everywhere else, they get on these jobs and they work. But you can't come to church. Don't let Satan fool us to what he's trying to do. He don't want you to come to church. Amen? And I, I keep it simple like that and we're going to open the door for the church. Don't, don't let him fool us. Don't let him fool us. The doors of the church stands open. Jesus said, the day that you hear my voice, a heart or not your heart. There may be someone today that may want to come and be a part of this church family. God has his hands out and he's telling us or telling you to come. Would it be someone
It says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With everyone this morning. Amen. Will that be another day? Don't let the devil rob you from the blessings. Pass the troll of the birth and spirit. Will you come right now while the blood is running warm in your veins? Most of us depend on tomorrow or next week. We don't know we have tomorrow or next week. We don't know if we have the next minute or our next hour. Only God knows. Maybe you're here and want to rededicate your life to Christ. You fell by the wayside somewhere. And you left God and you really want to come back to him. He's right where you left him. Will that be one this morning? Another one. Amen. Will you come? Amen. Amen. Will that be enough? I heard the songwriter say, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. But I know he is. Will you come? Will that be enough? Don't let Satan whisper in your ear and rob you of your blessings. Have you heard the message? Have you heard the message? The doors will still stand open, but for those of you who don't want to come, you heard the message, and you heard the message, and what you're saying to us and God is that it is well with your soul.
supposed to be something moving. We're supposed to be winning people to the Lord. We're supposed to be busy in the kingdom. We're supposed to be doing all these types of things. And uh, I will be ready to go to another church. I belong to another church. And I, I, I got, just got tired. And I was riding down the road, and I saw a couple cars here, and the Lord said, stop right there. He said, stop right there. He said, go, go, go to that Bible study. I didn't listen, and I rode around the corner to see if the church where I was going, somebody was there. And nobody never came. And God said, I told you to stop at the church by the school over here. And I, he said, God told me that. Well, I, I, I didn't do it at first. And so I finally stopped. I don't know anyone here. I met Brother Neil, his mother, and the uh, Pastor Lewis for the first time. So I, I didn't know who was here. I just knew that I was tired and I wanted a move from God. And the second thing is this, I come out of the Baptist church, but 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 I, 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 I'm a tongue talker. I don't know if y'all bothered about that. But I wanted to, that's why I'm up here, so that I can explain that I love the Baptist church. This is where I got my start. My grandmother used to bring me to church. This is where I learned to have faith in God. But I wanted to know, is it okay for me I'm, I'm a, I might be a little bit different. <laughs> and I was wondering if, if I would be as welcome to come. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoarse right now, but I'm not overbearing. I just pray in the Holy Ghost. I just deal with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And um, I don't apologize for it, but you know, the Bible says that all things be done decent man in, in order. There's a man of the house here um, that be respected. And I felt like I owed it to everybody to come to be honest. I feel I'm a Holy Ghost filled person. I just about to, you know, see her just have to see the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But I would love to come and be a part, but I but I just want to pray in the Holy Ghost with my me. tempting to do things that I really don't want to do. I know I shouldn't do, knowing the right thing to do, but it'd be hard. I just ask for some help. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for 
to say this and move on. Remember, become the Sonic Fury. Thursdays, amen. That's where we start. And then come to Bible study. When we come to Bible study, we can ask questions. We can learn from God's word, amen. But we have teachers who teach. Teaching in Sunday school, starting with Brother Cecil and Brother Brooks and whoever teach there. And then also in Bible study, we also have our fellow Brother Newton. I'm looking at him. He teach. He do a beautiful job. And then Reverend Bullard teach. And he do a good job. Amen. Amen. And also Reverend Robinson. And that's how we learn. And that's how we learn the word of God in the study. Amen. In the study of his word, amen. And we can see what God is talking directly to us. Amen. amen. Y'all feel all right. Amen. Oh, yes, yeah, sister. Listen. Well, she was just as pretty and sharp as she wanted to be, wasn't she? Sister Payton. Yeah, I can't see that. Hey, sweet. All right. We thank God for that black history. We're supposed to be having some more black history coming up this month. I think on the fourth, fourth Sunday. Yes, sir. What's next Sunday? I don't know. Oh, next Sunday as well. Amen. And if you have some too, what you got? You want some black history? Amen. Amen. We need to know. Amen. We need to know. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, which art in heaven. God, we thank you. And then, God, we love you. And then, God, we thank you for being with us, and we thank you for your presence. And we thank you for, throughout this entire day, yes, Lord. the songs that were sang and the prayers that were prayed. And yes, Lord. We thank you, God, for you touching the, the children, the hearts of your children, God. Yes, Lord. For them to do what they did. Yes, Lord. And, God, we thank you, and then, God, we love you. We pray that you just bless us as we leave here for them from your presence. Yes, we pray that you just watch over our homes in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. And then, God, we love you. Would you please repeat these words after me? Much prayer. Much prayer.